In this video, we're going to be talking about automating within Pro Tools, and we're going to be automating in the MIDI world with MIDI automation as well as audio automation. So to start off, I have a really simple synth line, um, and I've made it with Massive. And if you just listen to it, it's quite simple to start with. And in order to make this sound do some different stuff, and maybe get a little bit more interesting, we're going to do some automation on it. Now, we can work to start with on an instrument track, um, starting with audio volume automation, which means the overall output of this track on the fader, um, the volume can be controlled that way. So I find that the easiest way to start doing this and to add multiple phases of automation with um, each of your instrument or audio tracks is to click on this little downward arrow here, which creates what's called an audio uh, automation lane. So right now it's set to audio volume. Yours might say something different. But if we click on that, we can see that it's split between audio automation, which is the overall output, and the MIDI automation, which has to do with the data itself. So I'm going to start with audio volume just to make a gradual change in volume from um, low to high. And it's pretty easy. All you have to really do is just click on um, this pencil tool. And if you hold down when you click the pencil tool, you can see there's lots of different modes that you can draw with. I like to use a straight line um, just because I'm very, very bad with my mouse and I can't draw very correctly. So all you have to do when this automation lane is selected is just click and drag and it will create a gradual buildup in volume. And that's a really, really simple way to create a sort of tension of building up and getting from quieter to louder. But there's also other ways that we can um, affect the sound to make it a little bit more interesting and do something different besides just the overall volume. And um, to get rid of any automation data, just highlight it and um, backspace and that will delete it. I'm just going to bring that back up to where it was. So um, what else we can do with these automation lanes um, is start going into the MIDI world by actually mapping a MIDI CC to one of the parameters within Massive. So as you can see right here um, I have my cutoff frequency all the way up for uh, my filter and uh, the cutoff filter is uh, usually found in most synthesizers and that essentially is a low pass filter that you can adjust the cutoff frequency at. So the lower that this setting is, um, the less high frequencies are coming through and the higher it is, the more high frequencies are coming through. And you can hear that when I play it here. So if we want to have a gradual sweep from low to high of this cutoff frequency, we can put that in through automation as well. And that's going to create a really cool effect um, of growing um, and low frequencies into high frequencies, and it creates a lot of tension within the music. And in order to do that, it's really easy. Um, MIDI CCs are actually mapped to specific numbers. There's some that are customizable, but um, most MIDI controllers that you'll have at home will have a mod wheel, which is CC number one. So I'm going to demonstrate this with CC number one or your mod wheel. So in order to, to map the mod wheel to control this, um, what we want to do is something called MIDI Learn. And if you have a right click on your mouse, you can do that or control click on a laptop. And you control click on whatever parameter you want to affect. And then you click MIDI Learn. And once I click that, I'm just going to move the mod wheel around. You can't see me doing it, but as you can see, this starts to move this parameter. And I'm just moving the mod wheel up and down. Now the mod wheel is going to control what we hear back um, in terms of the sound itself. So if we go back into our automation lanes, and let's just say we had some sort of volume change, and we want to add another lane for automation, we just click the little plus sign and it creates a new one for us. And if we click on this and go to controllers, as you can see, mod wheel, which number one is in parentheses, which means CC number one, just click on that. And now again, we do the exact same thing that we did with um, the audio volume automation. We just click and drag. You can do this. I'm just doing it in a straight line, but you can do it in any you know shape that you want. And now what that's going to do is automate the mod wheel, and I'll open up Massive to see it going to start low and grow.
as you can see that creates much more of a tension to start with. Now if you have any sort of like jump at the start of this or like something is kind of like like this that can usually is a glitch within Pro Tools um, as you can see I've just done it again and it doesn't happen So just be careful if you hear some little clicks and pops. Sometimes, you know, it won't go all the way to the bottom here when you draw it in. Um, but if you hear a click and pop, usually it might be just Pro Tools acting up a little bit. So don't get too concerned about that. But as you can see, the cutoff frequency is now moving and we've mapped it to CC number one or the mod wheel. All right. And that's a cool thing to do as well here on um, in the MIDI world and mapping CCs. So if we leave the synth alone for a minute, I'm going to go to this little drum part that I have, and it's very simple. It's just a kick drum um, on the beat. And we can do some other cool stuff with this kick drum. Um, first of all, uh, I have a uh, filter EQ, which is a high pass filter. And I have it very, very, very high up at the moment. And what I'm going to do is actually have a sweep of the high frequencies going down on this kick drum to have that come in gradually as the synth comes in gradually as well. So the only difference here is that this is a high pass filter and the cutoff frequency synth um, trick that we did within the synthesizer with Massive is a low pass frequency, um, low pass filter that's growing upward. So we're going to do the same thing here. And to automate an actual plugin within Pro Tools, we have to actually tell what we want the plugin to automate here. So in order to do that, it says auto at the top of every plugin here. And at the bottom it has like two little boxes. We want to click on those. And this is a really simple plugin, but most plugins are going to be um, more complicated than this. So make sure that you know exactly what parameter you're looking for in order to tell Pro Tools you want to automate it. This can also be done with each of your synthesizers, including Massive, but they do get complicated. So the option to map the CC is always there, or you can automate the, the um, plugin itself um, if you find the parameter you want to work with. So since I want to change the frequency, again, so that frequency is going from high to low, I'm just going to click Frequency and Add, and hit OK. So if I just mute this synth and we listen to the, the filter that's on this kick drum, it's very low and there's no beef to it. So we're going to actually automate that to get it to sound beefier and bigger. So again, let's just click on that downward arrow into our automation lanes, and you'll notice a difference here when we click here. As you can see, the EQ um, filter that I have is now able to be automated because we told it we wanted to automate the frequency, and we just click on that. And then now all we do again is just draw in. I'm just going to make this a little bigger. Just draw in that frequency change. And I'm going to do it in the opposite way that the um, synth is being automated. So I'm just going to make that bigger so you can see. So um, low pass frequency growing, high pass frequency gr uh, growing as well. So this is how it sounds all together. And as you can see, um, automating the plugin is just as easy. It makes one of these automation lanes, and it's really simple. And one last thing I want to talk to you about as well is this um, mapping of CCs to some of the parameters within a synth can also work within a sampler. So since I'm using battery, I'm just going to hopefully get to open up here. Since I'm using battery, this is a sampler, and it activates individual samples um, when we play them back. So I'm just going to go back to where this EQ is. And um, we can also map any of these mod wheels um, or any other MIDI CC controllers that you have to anywhere within um, the sampler. So if you want to create some of those like snare changes, like the high fre frequency snares that are tuned up and then have them um, sweep down, we can do that by selecting the snare sample. And then where it says tune, again, control click and you want to enable host automation which is essentially going to allow um, the host which is Pro Tools be able to um, to automate and then control click learn MIDI CC move the mod wheel around and now 
that will create those tuned snare drums that everybody loves. And that's the basics of automating within Pro Tools, using the automation lanes, um, MIDI automation, which is with the CCs, audio automation with the volume, and plug-in automation with our filter on the EQ.